Hey guys, not to beat a dead horse, but I've been getting so many comments, so much in-depth feedback on this Pyramid CRA one, I thought it deserved one final look before it gets put back together. A few things. Yes, once again, I am running this on 117 volts or less. The output voltage is not higher because I'm running it on a higher line voltage. Two, as a number of you pointed out, this does call for a 6L6GA, and that is not what is in there. It came with a 6L6G, and that's what I tried replacing it with. I don't have any GAs or GCs on hand. They have slightly improved specs over the G. However, this is what it came with, and I'm pretty sure it's the original because the date of manufacture is about the same as the capacitor analyzer, and it matches the other tube that's in there, both RCA from about the same uh, month of production, actually. More importantly, I finally got around to looking up the specifications for this tube, and they are definitely abusing it. As several of you pointed out, this is a bit of a hack design. They are not really using this tube. Well, this tube was designed as an audio amplifier. It's a beam power tube. Uh, and the maximum plate voltage, it varies a little bit from the, the G to the GA to the GC, but it's about 400 volts, 375 volts. They are vastly exceeding that. At least for brief periods, because this has AC on the plate. But, uh, assuming this could go down to zero volts, uh, with regard to, like, zero volts across this, You'd be putting a peak of about 800 volts between the cathode and the plate. And as one of you mentioned, these tubes are prone to cathode damage. Um, so that's not a good thing. <laughs> so actually to abuse this tube less, you would actually want to keep the output voltage up fairly high. And normally you do, because we've been looking at this isolated circuit. There's another branch that this goes out to. This powers the whole device. So when you have the voltage turned down low on this control, the I-tube doesn't work. The RF oscillator doesn't work. So when you're normally using this, you would have this output set for around 400 volts or so. Which means the voltage between the plate and cathode is within design specs, or right at the edge of it. So actually, you're killing the tube when you're trying to turn the voltage down really low. <laughs> So it's actually best to kind of keep this up on the higher range. That's where I'll be normally using it anyways. And again, this is not meant to be a precision regulated DC power supply. It's just used for a quick and dirty test uh, on capacitors. Uh, does it need, and that's why they have a meter. Yeah, it'd be nice if the knob indicator matched up with the voltmeter. But that's why they give you a voltmeter, so you can see what the voltage actually is. Plus, of course, when you're on a 0 to 60 range, these numbers are meaningless anyways. Um, but that's my conclusion from all this. And I appreciate all your suggestions on modifying it. I'm not going to. Uh, one, I don't really think it's warranted. And two, I, I tend to want to keep things original as possible, because otherwise, at some point, this will get passed on to somebody else, and they're not going to know what the heck's going on. And yeah, I could include detailed notes about the modifications and I made and all that stuff, but life is short, and I want to move on to other things. But I do appreciate all the brain power and effort and head scratching you guys have put into this. Uh, it's an incredibly basic circuit, um, but it's it's kind of interesting. I mean, it's it's weird the way it works too. Uh, I've I've tried some other voltage measurements like between ground and the grid, um, ground and the cathode, and it, it's weird because the voltage between like ground and the grid doesn't change a whole lot um, because as I, as I tried to explain before as you vary the grid voltage a little bit if, if you guys have seen characteristic curves where you got a, a graph of like um, plate voltage plate current and different grid voltages as you change the grid voltage you're changing the operating point of the tube you're changing its gain so this is kind of a feedback situation where it's not as simple as like this is a static thing that always works the same way and as you vary the grid the output voltage and now as you vary the grid it's actually altering the characteristics of the tube a bit because you're changing its bias point um, 
<laughs> so it's it's a little hard. I know one of you tried to simulate it in uh, LT Spice and it didn't really work out so well, and I'm, I'm not surprised, especially because the tube is being used outside of its normal operating range, at least for a portion of uh, the output voltage range. So. Yeah, it is what it is. Sure, I could redesign this, I could replace it, I could throw in some modern rectifiers, I could throw in a, a high voltage uh, silicon rectifier, heck, I could replace the whole thing with a solid state variable um, power supply, but I'm not going to do any of that. Because it is what it is, and it, it works well enough, and yeah, maybe someday the tube's going to crap out because it's being pushed too hard, and I'll replace it, and I'll just keep moving on. That's all for now.